We'd cuddle and whisper. And Virginia would show me how they did it. In a time when societal norms dictated silence, these iconic figures dared to defy expectations and challenge the status quo. From whispered rumors to clandestine affairs, these stars navigated the complexities of identity and desire behind closed doors. Their stories shed light on a tumultuous era in entertainment history, where secrecy and scandal often overshadowed authenticity. Join us on a journey through the enigmatic realm of love and romance that thrived behind closed doors, revealing the shocking stories that have remained obscured for decades. Number one, Greta Garbo. Pardon me, are you an explorer? No, I'm looking for the Eiffel Tower. Uh, good heavens, is that thing lost again? Greta Garbo, born Greta Lovisa Gustafsson on September 18, 1905, in Stockholm, Sweden, she was destined for greatness from humble beginnings. Raised in a working-class family, Garbo's early life was marked by financial struggles and personal loss. Her father passed away when she was just 14, leaving her mother to support the family as a seamstress. Despite these challenges, Garbo's magnetic presence and undeniable talent would soon catapult her into the spotlight. Garbo's journey to stardom began when she landed a scholarship to the prestigious Royal Dramatic Theatre School in Stockholm. It was here that she honed her acting skills and cultivated a passion for the craft that would define her career. After making her stage debut in 1920, Garbo quickly caught the attention of film director Maurits Stiller, who recognized her potential and brought her to the attention of the burgeoning Swedish film industry. In 1924, Garbo made her film debut in The Saga of Gosta Berling, earning critical acclaim for her captivating performance. It wasn't long before Hollywood took notice, and in 1925, she signed a contract with Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer, MGM, marking the beginning of her iconic career in American cinema. From the moment she set foot in Hollywood, Garbo was surrounded by an aura of mystery and secrecy. Her reclusive nature only served to fuel public fascination, leading to countless rumors and speculation about her personal life. Central to the enigma of Greta Garbo was her sexuality, which remains a subject of much debate and speculation to this day. While she never publicly acknowledged her sexual orientation, rumors of her relationships with both men and women abound. One of the most notable figures linked to Garbo romantically was the legendary actress Marlene Dietrich. Garbo just said made the first talking picture. You see, I was not there during the silent days. I was only there during the talking. Their alleged affair, which reportedly began in the early 1930s, captivated the public's imagination and added to Garbo's mystique as a Hollywood icon. In addition to Dietrich, Garbo was rumored to have had romantic entanglements with various other individuals, including writer Mercedes de Acosta and actress Salka Viertel. De Acosta, known for her relationships with numerous Hollywood stars, including Marlene Dietrich and Tallulah Bankhead, reportedly shared a passionate affair with Garbo that lasted for several years. Viertel, a close friend and confidant of Garbo's, was rumored to have been more than just a friend, with whispers of a secret romance between the two women. Despite her penchant for privacy, Garbo's personal life was often the subject of intense scrutiny by the media. Paparazzi hounded her every move, eager to capture a glimpse of the elusive star. Yet Garbo remained resolute in her determination to maintain her privacy, fiercely guarding her personal affairs from prying eyes. While Garbo's romantic relationships may have been shrouded in secrecy, her on-screen allure was undeniable. With her smoldering gaze and enigmatic presence, she captivated audiences in films such as Anna Christie, Mata Hari, and Camille. Her performances were marked by a rare intensity and emotional depth that set her apart from her peers, earning her accolades and adoration from fans around the world. Garbo's career reached its pinnacle in the 1930s when she became one of MGM's biggest stars and one of the highest paid actresses in Hollywood. Yet despite her professional success, she remained elusive and inscrutable, distancing herself from the trappings of fame and fortune. As the years went by, 
Garbo's appearances on screen became increasingly rare, with her last film, Two-Faced Woman, released in 1941. After retiring from acting at the age of 35, she retreated into seclusion, rarely making public appearances or granting interviews. In her later years, Garbo lived a quiet and solitary life, far removed from the glitz and glamour of Hollywood. Number 2. Joan Crawford In the tapestry of Hollywood's golden age, few stars shine as brightly or remain as enigmatic as Joan Crawford. You and my husband aren't going on seeing each other. That's rather up to Stephen, don't you think? Born Lucille Faylesseur on March 23, 1905, in San Antonio, Texas, her journey from a turbulent childhood to becoming one of the most iconic figures in film is nothing short of extraordinary. Raised in poverty by a single mother, Crawford faced adversity from a young age, working odd jobs to help support her family. Her early years were marked by instability and hardship, but they also instilled in her a fierce determination to succeed. Despite her challenging upbringing, Crawford's beauty and ambition would soon catch the eye of Hollywood. After winning a dance contest in 1923, she landed a spot in a chorus line and began her ascent to stardom. Renaming herself Joan Crawford, she quickly rose through the ranks, catching the attention of MGM Studios, who signed her to a contract in 1925. Despite her outward success, Crawford's private life was marked by a series of tumultuous relationships and personal struggles. Central to the intrigue surrounding Crawford were her relationships with women, which have long been the subject of speculation and rumor. While she was married four times, including to fellow actor Francho Tone, rumors of affairs with both men and women persist to this day. One of the most enduring rumors involves her alleged relationship with fellow actress Barbara Stanwyck, though neither woman ever confirmed the speculation. One of Crawford's most notorious secret love affairs was with her co-star Clark Gable. Their on-screen chemistry in films like Possessed and Dancing Lady ignited off-screen sparks, leading to a torrid affair that scandalized Hollywood. You talk to somebody else. Don't ask so many questions, just get going. I thought maybe you'd change your mind. Despite both being married at the time, their passionate liaison captivated the public imagination and became the stuff of Hollywood legend. Among her rumored female lovers was the iconic Marilyn Monroe, whose brief but intense connection with Crawford sparked speculation about the nature of their relationship. In addition to Monroe, Crawford's alleged affairs included dalliances with actresses like Martha Ray and an enigmatic figure named Marion Morgan. While details about Morgan remain elusive, her presence in Crawford's life adds to the mystique surrounding the actress's romantic entanglements. However, it was Crawford's relationship with her personal secretary, Christina Crawford, that would spark the most controversy. Christina, who was adopted by Crawford in 1940, later wrote a memoir detailing her troubled relationship with her mother alleging abuse and manipulation. While the veracity of Christina's claims has been debated, the book shed light on the complexities of Crawford's personal life and the fraught nature of her relationships. Despite the challenges she faced in her personal life, Crawford's professional accomplishments were nothing short of remarkable. With over 80 films to her name, including classics like Mildred Pierce, Grand Hotel, and Whatever Happened to Baby Jane, she left an indelible mark on the silver screen. Her performances were marked by a rare intensity and emotional depth, earning her critical acclaim and adoration from fans around the world. Throughout her career, Crawford remained fiercely dedicated to her craft, earning her the nickname, the ultimate movie star. She was known for her tireless work ethic and meticulous attention to detail, often staying on set late into the night to perfect her performances, as she grew older, Crawford's star began to fade, but her legacy endured. Even in her later years, she remained a cultural icon, inspiring countless actors and filmmakers with her unparalleled talent and tenacity. Though she passed away in 1977, her influence continues to be felt in the world of cinema, a testament to the enduring power of a true Hollywood legend. 
<laughs> Number 3. Talula Bankhead. Talula Bankhead, born on January 31, 1902, in Huntsville, Alabama, was destined for a life of drama and stardom. She was born into a family of political prominence. Her father, William Bankhead, served as a U.S. congressman, and her mother, Adelaide Eugenia. Bankhead was a socialite known for her charm and elegance. Tallulah's early years were marked by privilege and indulgence, but also by tragedy, as she lost her mother to a heart attack when she was just 15. She attended prestigious schools in Alabama and eventually enrolled at the Convent of the Sacred Heart in Manhattan, where she honed her acting skills and developed a love for the stage. At the age of 15, Tallulah made her theatrical debut in a production of The Squab Farm in Huntsville. In 1919, she moved to New York City to pursue her dreams, and it wasn't long before she made her Broadway debut in the play The Squab Farm, reprising her role from the earlier production. Throughout the 1920s, Tallulah's star continued to rise on Broadway where she earned a reputation for her electrifying performances and uninhibited personality. She appeared in a string of successful plays, including The Jest, Footloose, and The Little Foxes, earning critical acclaim and adoration from audiences. In 1930, Tallulah made her foray into Hollywood, where she starred in a series of films that showcased her versatility as an actress. Her breakout role came in the 1932 film Tarnished Lady, in which she portrayed a morally ambiguous socialite. The film was a commercial success and solidified Tallulah's status as a leading lady in Hollywood. Throughout the 1930s and 1940s, Tallulah appeared in a number of films, including My Sin, Devil and the Deep, and Lifeboat. Her performances were marked by her distinctive voice, commanding presence, and undeniable magnetism, earning her a legion of fans and admirers. Off-screen Tallulah's personal life was just as colorful and dramatic as her performances. She was known for her wild parties, extravagant lifestyle, and numerous love affairs with both men and women. Tallulah embraced her bisexuality with unabashed fervor, openly declaring her love for partners of all genders and refusing to conform to societal norms. Among her most notable secret love affairs was her romance with actress Patsy Kelly. Kelly, known for her sassy comedic roles, shared a loving relationship with Bankhead that spanned many years. Bankhead's romantic entanglements were not limited to Kelly, however. Throughout her life, she engaged in passionate affairs with both men and women, including some of Hollywood's most prominent figures. Her list of rumored lovers reads like a who's who of Hollywood, with names such as Greta Garbo, Billie Holiday, and Barbara Stanwyck among those whispered in gossip columns and behind closed doors. Despite the secrecy surrounding her love life, Bankhead's sexuality was an open secret in Hollywood circles. She was known for her flamboyant personality, her devil-may-care attitude, and her willingness to defy convention. Bankhead's unabashed embrace of her desires challenged societal norms and paved the way for greater acceptance and visibility of LGBTQ plus individuals in the entertainment industry. In 1968, Talula's illustrious career came to an end when she passed away at the age of 66 from complications related to pneumonia. Her death marked the end of an era in Hollywood and Broadway, leaving behind a legacy of talent, charisma, and unapologetic authenticity that continues to inspire performers to this day. Number 4. Marlena Dietrich Let me go! You throw yourself into my arm? I kissed you because I loved you. Marlene Dietrich, born on December 27, 1901, in Berlin, Germany, was destined to become one of the most iconic figures of Hollywood's golden age. Raised in a middle-class family, Dietrich's early years were marked by a passion for music and performance. Her father, Louis Erich Otto, Dietrich was a police lieutenant, and her mother, Wilhelmina Elisabeth Josephine, was a housewife. Dietrich's journey to stardom began in the vibrant cabaret scene of Weimar era Berlin, where she honed her craft as a singer and dancer. In 1929, Dietrich made her film debut in Joseph von Sternberg's The Blue Angel, 
a role that would catapult her to international fame. Throughout the 1930s and 1940s, Dietrich starred in a string of iconic films, including Morocco, Shanghai Express, and Destry Rides Again. Her performances were marked by a unique blend of sensuality, sophistication, and vulnerability, earning her critical acclaim and adoration from fans around the world. Off-screen, Dietrich's personal life was just as intriguing as her on-screen persona. One of Dietrich's most notable secret love affairs was with the enigmatic French actress Edith Piaf. The two women met in Paris in the 1930s and quickly formed a deep bond that transcended friendship. Despite their vastly different backgrounds and lifestyles, Dietrich and Piaf shared a passionate connection that lasted for several years. In addition to her relationship with Piaf, Dietrich also had secret love affairs with other women throughout her life. From her rumored romance with actress Talula Bankhead to her flirtations with writer Mercedes de Acosta, Dietrich's love life was characterized by a sense of secrecy and discretion. Dietrich's romantic entanglements were not limited to women, however. Throughout her life, she engaged in passionate affairs with numerous men, including actors, musicians, and political figures. Her relationships were often tempestuous and tumultuous, marked by intense passion and dramatic flare-ups. Despite the secrecy surrounding her love affairs, Dietrich's sexuality was an open secret in Hollywood circles. She was known for her androgynous style and her willingness to challenge traditional gender norms, both on and off screen. Her iconic performance in the film Morocco, in which she famously kissed another woman, solidified her status as a queer icon and paved the way for greater visibility and acceptance of LGBTQ individuals in the entertainment industry. Despite her success in Hollywood, Dietrich never forgot her roots in Germany and remained deeply connected to her homeland throughout her life. During World War II, she famously entertained Allied troops on the front lines, earning her the admiration and gratitude of soldiers around the world. Her tireless efforts to support the war effort and boost morale made her a beloved figure among servicemen and women, cementing her status as a true patriot and humanitarian. In the years following the war, Dietrich continued to captivate audiences with her performances on stage and screen. She starred in numerous films, including Witness for the Prosecution, Judgment at Nuremberg, and Touch of Evil, showcasing her versatility as an actress and her enduring appeal as a screen legend. In her later years, Dietrich retired from public life and retreated into seclusion, preferring the quiet comforts of home to the glitz and glamour of Hollywood. She lived out her days in Paris, surrounded by close friends and family, until her death on May 6, 1992, at the age of 90. Number 5. Catherine Hepburn What's your angle? Got a job for you. There's only one job that you coppers would want me for. Catherine Houghton Hepburn was born on May 12, 1907, in Hartford, Connecticut, into a wealthy and progressive family. Her father, Dr. Thomas Hepburn, was a urologist, and her mother, Catherine Martha Houghton, was a suffragist and advocate for women's rights. She attended Bryn Mawr College, where she excelled in sports and drama, showcasing her natural talent and charisma on stage. After graduating in 1928, Hepburn decided to pursue a career in acting, determined to make her mark on the world. Hepburn's journey to stardom began on Broadway, where she made her debut in the play The Tsarina in 1928. Despite initial setbacks and mixed reviews, Hepburn's tenacity and determination paid off when she landed the lead role in the play A Bill of Divorcement in 1932. Her performance earned rave reviews and caught the attention of Hollywood producers leading to her film debut later that year in A Bill of Divorcement opposite John Barrymore. Throughout the 1930s, Hepburn's star continued to rise in Hollywood, where she quickly established herself as one of the industry's leading actresses. She captivated audiences with her intelligence, wit, and unconventional beauty, starring in a string of successful films such as Morning Glory, Little Women, and Bringing Up Baby. Despite her professional success, 
Hepburn's personal life was marked by tumult and turmoil. She was famously married once to Ludlow Ogden Smith in 1928, but the marriage ended in divorce just a few years later. One of the most enduring and impactful partnerships in Hepburn's life was her legendary romance with Spencer Tracy. The pair first met on the set of Woman of the Year in 1942 and went on to star in nine films together over the course of their decades-long relationship. Despite Tracy's marriage to another woman, he and Hepburn embarked on a passionate and tumultuous affair that lasted until his death in 1967. One of Hepburn's most notable secret love affairs was with businessman and socialite Laura Harding. The two women met in the early 1930s and quickly formed a close bond that blossomed into a romantic relationship. Despite the societal taboos surrounding same-sex relationships at the time, Hepburn and Harding were reportedly deeply in love, sharing a connection that endured for over two decades, from her rumored romance with actress Alyssa Landy to her flirtations with socialite Phyllis Wilborn, Hepburn's love life was characterized by a sense of secrecy and discretion. Despite the challenges of living in a time when homosexuality was still stigmatized, Hepburn remained true to herself and pursued love on her own terms. Hepburn's career reached its peak in the 1950s and 1960s, when she starred in a series of iconic films that solidified her status as one of Hollywood's greatest actresses. From her Oscar-winning performances in Guess Who's Coming to Dinner, to her unforgettable role as the eccentric Eleanor of Aquitaine in The Lion in Winter, Hepburn's versatility and range were on full display, earning her four Academy Awards and countless accolades throughout her career. In her later years, Hepburn continued to work in film and theater, cementing her status as a living legend and cultural icon. She passed away on June 29, 2003, at the age of 96, leaving behind a legacy that continues to inspire and uplift audiences around the world. Hepburn's indomitable spirit, fierce independence, and unwavering commitment to her craft serve as a testament to the power of perseverance and the enduring allure of a true Hollywood legend. Thanks for watching another episode. While you are still here, make sure to click the video on your screen for more quality content.